This is my uh, background uh, where uh, with uh, a, a small team I have the possibility uh, to make research uh, especially in the field of, of cultural policy cultural policy in Germany, but also in Europe, and more and more in uh, uh, the international uh, level. Um, that means, uh, on one side, uh, bilateral comparatistic uh, studies, but uh, also in observation, especially what is going on uh, uh, on this uh, uh, continent. So Africa is the focus, which is a big one, of course, uh, but um, since I was invited three years ago by the Goethe Institute to take part in another uh, conference about the cultural and political changes uh, in the country, I was uh, very much uh, happy to uh, accompany the Arab Cultural Policy Group in uh, eight different uh, Arab uh, countries and also uh, with the UNESCO chair to East and uh, South Africa, where I have sometimes um, the feeling uh, that uh, cultural policy is uh, in, in that way, in a, in a new development, uh, that uh, people, artists, activists, uh, civil society is rethinking that. And because we are very well structured with the infrastructure, uh, not only in the Netherlands and in the Flemish, and uh, especially in Germany with uh, uh, 80 big opera houses and thousands of museums and uh, libraries and so on. Uh, um, this is uh, a background uh, not only to think uh, how we could finance uh, all these uh, institutions, uh, for the next decade, uh, it's uh, sometimes much more these, uh, these questions uh, you in your country, in Egypt or uh, in other uh, transformation processes uh, uh, you are asking for. And that's why I will be uh, the player tonight more general, why cultural policy uh, who uh, is making cultural policy, what uh, could it be uh, uh, in that way, in this idea of uh, good governance to find the cultural policy structure, including uh, these people uh, who could uh, participate as uh, artists uh, or as um, activists. And uh, so I will give you only a short uh, um, view uh, about our research uh, in Hildesheim based on all this experience from the last years, uh, also in Egypt, in Tunisia uh, and other countries, which gave me the possibility uh, to look much more clearer to my subject than I did it all over the years uh, before in Germany. In order to do justice to the importance of art and culture for the individual and society, we need cultural policies which give a particular boost to cultural participation. The problem is that not everyone is able and willing to draw reassurance from artistic experiences. The seer of culture is not a place where everyone feels at home, nor does it give them an opportunity to think about the meaning of life, allow them to search for individual enrichment or provide them with pure pleasure. In the first chapter of its final report entitled The Significance of Art and Culture for the Individual and the State, a committee set up by the German government in 2007 to inquire into culture in Germany, stated that it was convinced that 
I quote, if the arts are to have some significance for people, even indirectly, this will be a result of the multiplicity of propagation by the media and other means of public transformation. In this way, the arts have their significance as a part of culture, even through this might be indirect. For when we talk about individual freedom and dignity, demand them, portray them in all their contradictions and display them in symbolic forms to enable other people to think about them more deeply and above all experience them directly, we do so mainly in the arts. End of quotation. The arts are enable people to take up the themes of individuality and social interconnection. In this way, the arts have an effect on society for beyond the sphere of artistic communication because they help to give people a meaning in life and determine human intents and purposes. This is why we need cultural policy, which sees itself as a social policy and thus enables, defends and plays its part in shaping art and culture. In recent years, a great deal of thought has been developed to sustainability as a target, a subject and a quality criterion of arts and arts education. This is a good reason for this. It is not only a matter of reproducing and constructively developing democratic societies, but of ensuring the survival of life on our planet. A number of basic competences have been put forward as being of a fundamental importance. These include tolerance of ambiguity, empathy, <coughs> the ability to estimate the risk and comprehend the consequences of action, self-reflection, and a commitment to civic involvement. When acquired, they can promote the capacity for sustainable action. Artistic education develops these competencies. Its central aim is to encourage people to reflect and communicate and to empower them to engage in positive action. This is an essential precondition for developing the potentials of every individual and by implication for promoting responsible and sustainable action. What is the way of implementing such a good governance for cultural policy going through all this background of a theory of cultural policy? Good governance for cultural policy is embedded in current discourses on cultural studies. We must try to identify the very best theories and practices concerning governance and policy and to make it very clear in our Hildesheim understanding of governance this is not only a question of the government policy. <coughs> governance is to organizing policy and that means at the same time civil society. I think this is very important and this is not only a question in Germany, I think this is also a question in other countries. The, the de debate on good governance compromises the examination of control mechanisms within institutions, principles and structures. Up until now, very little attention has been given to concepts of good governance in cultural policy. 
It is therefore imperative to question the meaning of transparency and participation, efficiency, accountability, the market economy, the rule of law and justice, with regard to cultural action and processes of democratic transformation. In all this, it is essential to question the role of the arts and individual artists in the development of society, and the role of business enterprises with regard to their corporate, social and cultural responsibility. We also need to clarify the freedom and the context needed by the arts within any social development and the role which arts edu education has to play within this context. Furthermore, we should discuss how to link the protection and the promotion of diversity in cultural expressions with the role of the arts in society and ask which links with the creative industries promote the role of the arts in social development. You listen to a lot of terms, terms we are really uh, uh, using all the time, but uh, my uh, interest is to bring these terms uh, in a real connection to the question, why for? Sometimes everyone is very much touched by the, the idea to support creative industries. But the question must be, what is the use of creative industries for the whole society and not only for a part of them, uh, for example, uh, the market. And arts education is not only a question how to uh, integrate uh, people in the system of yesterday. It's also the question how to give people their access, their uh, special way uh, to come in to the society, but also with their culture uh, to the cultural landscape. We must discuss what policy structures are needed to allow the arts to have a social role and role and function and how cultural policy must be reviewed in this respect. It is also necessary to clarify which forms of cooperation and exchange between North and South and also between South and South are needed in this context and to pinpoint the existing extent of the demand for training artists and cultural managers in developing countries. In a word, a debate on sustainability with reference to the arts and the integration of cultural policy actions remains a major challenge in the 21st century. Let me finish this introduction with five fundamental thoughts for good governance each of which has to be continually tested by research into cultural policies. Artists, citizens and policy makers must discuss five essential parameters. First, setting agendas with the arts. The arts are not yet included in United Nations Development Goals. This is a huge mistake. The power of culture lies in its artistic complexity, in the fact that it plays with human sensibilities, reflects realities and discusses question, questions concerning our social life. To be able to do this, the arts need to be given priority in intervention policy. It is essential to put cultural policy on the agenda of development. Parameter number two, sustainability through the arts. Sustainable development is development that means the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. This quotation 
comes from the United Nations report of the World Commission on Environment and Development, and it's 25 years ago. It contains two key concepts. The concept of needs, in particular the essential needs of the world's poor, to which overriding priority should be given, and the idea of limitations on the environment imposed by the state of technology and social organization and their ability to meet present and future needs. Parameter number three, capacity building in the arts. What kind of infrastructure do artists need? Networking is, for example, the new principle in the cultural world. Artists need space for their work laboratories for experiments and constant discussions amongst themselves and with their audiences. This is another complex system which calls for research to find out more about the conditions needed to inspire artistic development, to find out more about the inspiring role of mobility in artists' work and more about how to transfer the arts successfully into daily life. Parameter number four, education for the arts. People talk a lot about arts education, especially in Germany since 10 years. But nothing is really put into action. <coughs> we are still waiting for the arts to be implemented in the educational system. We are involved in the process of cultural management as arts education. We are working as researcher for the arts in development. One model of arts education was recently given by the German writer with a Turkish background, Feridun Saimoglu, in the magazine Kulturaustausch. And this is a quotation, I think uh, it's um, the artist's voice, and this is for me also very important as an academic person to listen to this artist. So, Saimoglu said, the arts are helping me to change my individual situation, to leave behind lower social conditions. Not everyone is born in a family with a good educational background, but the arts can open up many possibilities for a better life. And for many men, reading a novel could make a lot of difference because they suddenly learn to be honest and respectful towards women. Parameter number five, and the last one, artistic research. Artistic research is about how artistic means can give us the specific knowledge to allow us to view and experience the world in a different way. This is exactly why I'm interested in finding a fundamental legitimation for cultural policy in comparisons in the artist's motivation. Their search could be our research and vice versa. The question is, when do artists go too far and when do we need we not go far enough? On the one hand, they feel compelled to play a constructive role in building the new democratic order. On the other hand, as the contradictions of a developing society emerge, I'm thinking of such things as inequality, poverty, unemployment, poor governance, intolerance, xenophobia and corruption, among other morbid symptoms. Artists also have to take up their historic role and have the courage to criticize and speak through to power. Artistic issues are political issues. The subject is the role of the arts, the framework is the ideas behind a future society. It is time in our globalized world to rethink cultural policy to give civil society a chance and form concepts in a bottom-up process for more participation and development. Thank you so much.
Thank you very much, Professor Wolfgang Schneider from the University of Hildesheim. Um, especially for this idea that the limits of arts and the role of arts has to be discussed within society and uh, should not be dictated from the state in the sense that the, uh, because I have to say honestly that, you start, that when I read your um, presentation first that I thought that you start from a narrow understanding of uh, cultural politics in which uh, the state practically does the policy uh, and supports art education but uh, Professor Schneider stressed very much how important the civil society is uh, to support arts, art, art education, um, and that the crucial basically aim is uh, of uh, developing the self, providing a space for self-reflection and uh, debate for the development of society. Um, Professor Mona Baza is going to put uh, these things now in the context of Egypt in the recent uh, recent three years, I think something this period, so she is presenting scattered thoughts concerning the politics of culture in Egypt. Thank you. Can you hear me? Is it all right? Okay. Good evening everybody. So thank you very much for Professor Schneider for this interesting talk. I will, uh, uh, I have you know, set, I mean, I, the title of my lecture is Scattered Thought because it's really scattered thoughts. And uh, I'll just be mentioning points because I think we live in a very special moment, difficult moment in Egypt. So, and I think that it's, I don't have any recipe and I don't have any answer. I'm just going to list a few uh, uh, phenomena. And uh, as a, I'm trained as a sociologist. So as a sociologist, I'm interested in paradoxes. So I'm just... Everything I'll be saying is all about tensions and paradoxes. And, uh, and by the end of the paper, I'll be commenting exactly, you know, raising some, some issues that you've been uh, raising uh, and how to link up what I've been, you know, uh, the Egyptian scene with some of the points you've been uh, talking about. So I have nine points. Point one, and, and, and they are, uh, once again, scattered, not related. So recently, our concern now, and the main concern, is that uh, we have recently the two, the two draconian laws that have been uh, sanctioning uh, the NGOs and uh, the anti-demonstration laws. So these two laws have been having a very uh, negative impact on the cultural, uh, political, on the cultural scene, political and cultural scene. And, uh, and basically, it was meant to curtail human rights organizations, but it is, of course, concerning uh, a wider scene. And, um, and of course, it has affected uh, uh, a large number of young activists. They are sitting in jail today, and uh, who, uh, precisely those who protested against the law. And, uh, and therefore, you know, the situation is, uh, is part and parcel of, once again, the state as playing the role of the public morality. Uh, this is not new. This has always existed before 2011. So we have a certain continuation of, of uh, uh, practices, clamp down on homosexuals, uh, closing down of coffee houses, etc. And um, uh, there is, if you read Madame Mas, an exodus of intellectuals, a large exodus of intellectuals. So can we compare it to the Second World War, German intellectuals, uh, I don't know, in leaving Germany or, the, or, or I mean, a large number of, uh, I don't think so. I don't think so, and I'll be explaining that why. But, but, and there are uh, writings about despair. Um, and I think the most interesting article was Asset Bayat's uh, recent article in Madame Asset about despair and revolution, and I'll be commenting on that. Point two, we had four years of euphoric, euphoric, uh, mesmerizing street politics, uh, Bakhtinian uh, 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 situation uh, of uh, uh, a public culture that is uh, uh, fascinating. Um, the whole city being turned into a city of performance. Uh, all the arts have been flourishing, and exactly, precisely in the absence of the state. And we need to reflect about that. Precisely, if we want to compare about Germany, the long history of bureaucratization and a moment of revolution where really we don't need to the state, and it's the street that is talking. So, uh, novel contestations, mu fascinating musicians, film industry, etc. Photography, graffiti, satire, and satire here, and novels, etc., 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 right? 
And all this is, uh, 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 the virtual world is interacting with reality and vice versa. And there are lots of writings about that. The cultural sphere, even under Morsi, and I think the moment of Morsi was fascinating because this is where we had precisely under Morsi a blooming uh, culture. 2012-2013 were the best cultural years for Egypt, if you follow. Uh, uh, and you had also uh, platforms uh, explaining that, Mebrar, Madamas, Jadaleya, etc., Ahram Online. So we have the a booming uh, culture precisely in the paradox, under the paradox of uh, the city being divided up, segregated into war zones, the militarization of the city, uh, walls, uh, murder, mm, massacres, killings, and in the midst of all that, you have really uh, a booming, a booming, uh, hilarious in a way, uh, uh, situation. So this is going together, and this is precisely where I think that that we need to reflect really about. Uh, whether really we need a state or not. I mean, by the end of it, this is the revolutionary moment that, that we are undoing everything. So, and now it's a different moment, order, restoration, and the restoration of the city is happening precisely with cleaning up the city. Not, I'm not talking now about culture, I'm talking about street vendors. You're cleaning up the city, and everybody's very happy about that. And uh, uh, we're talking about five million street vendors that have been cleaned up. And in th this is really also going hand in hand with the idea of revamping, gentrifying downtown. And I'm thinking of Shirket el Ismailia, who is a very important company, that has been one of the most important sponsors of culture in Egypt. They uh, sponsored a fascinating uh, 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 program, DCAF, all right? So we have to need to think now about <coughs> art, you know, mesmerizing art, street art, and now the next phase is commodification of art. By the way, I think we've never had so many galleries as we've had in the last few years. Zemanic alone, if you look at Zemanic, I think 19 galleries. I don't know how many new, how many old, but uh, and I'll be coming back to the whole notion of gatekeepers and, and the gatekeepers of art. And, and curators curating and, and the game that is being, being played here and question marks about commodifying commodification of, of revolutionary art. <coughs> but what I want to say is that, that we have here, on the one hand, we have you know, like a parallel thing going between revamping the city and then using, using forms of uh, form of, uh, or using forms of street art for that revamping and, and, so, and so on. So that needs to be rethought, and also how intellectuals are will be having trying to cope then with that. Uh, in that also, it's interesting to look at what architects are doing in terms of uh, gently fine passages in downtown, and then using uh, uh, then artists for them. However, since Rabah, it is clear that street politics have turned into a very dangerous endeavor. Jeaning of Allah uh, Ahmed Doma, the uh, lifelong sentence, Yara Saldan, and many others uh, uh, being in jail. The killing of Shemel Sabah recently, at the fourth anniversary of, uh, of uh, uh, the revolution, is, uh, I think, is a, is a turning point. And also the, the football, the football, uh, uh, the recent football uh, killings, that, to my understanding, it's, it is not a plot, but it's a continuation of a mismanagement of the masses. So clearly the space has narrowed, and yet those working in on the working class and social contestation, uh, like uh, uh, the work of Dina Makamaybit on the Helwan workers or the work of uh, Teti and uh, Gervasio, are very interesting because uh, those working on the movement, on, on poli uh, social and political movement, tell us that uh, what has happened is not only a change in the mindset, and I think this is the major, question that we need to address, the change in the mindset, but the change in the advocacies, that we have a new uh, a way of negotiation, even uh, uh, even though what the working class, the workers of Helwen might have lost, but if there is something new in the making of uh, struggling and negotiating, okay? And the, the creation then of trade, you know, hundreds of, of trade union, you know, Thank <laughs> you.
So there is something happening there in the, in the political mobilization uh, prior to, you know, prior to the, you know, after, after the revolution. And also, uh, uh, if you take, for instance, also um, the issue, it's not the arts now, but the issue of street vendors, it's interesting. They lost because they have been pushed out. But it's interesting to, to uh, uh, observe, you know, the, the, they created, uh, they've been working closely with human rights organizations and created then uh, a Facebook account that is very interesting. When they were being cleared up, the way they were uh, uh, fighting the police forces bared a lot of similarities with Tahrir. So you have, even though they were thugs, I mean, it's interesting to see how also the language of Tahrir has traveled, has been appropriated by the good, the bad, officers, the police officers, the, if you recall also the bearded Islamist police officers who demonstrated this, I think, 2013, 2012, and squatted in front of the Ministry of Interior with tents. And I think that this was a fascinating moment because it was a replica of Tahrir from officers. So that is, I mean, these are all very interesting symbolic. Uh, uh, so, it's an open question, but at least we have something in the making about negotiating with the government. Yeah, we're under the military now. I mean, I'm not sure. It's something open, but there is something that is in the making there. Uh, six, Art Square, El Fanidan, and I think that you visited this afternoon in Novel Safati, proved to be a very highly successful experiment with public space and so on. And, uh, and it was founded in 2004 and was the main institution that, cre that, uh, you know, that created the Art Square. In 2014, the cultural resources declared that it, should, it would shift its activities to the Arab countries because it couldn't continue. And it was closed, right? But uh, the termination of the Art Square initiative is evidently, of course, it's a depressing thing. I'm not saying that. Uh, but the fact that it transferred its news, uh, uh, it transferred its act activities extra territorially, is in itself an interesting thing. And Medra, that is now trying to register, who is registered as an organization, will be continuing. So it's a question mark that is an open thing. Exile now. The question of exile. And I think that this is, you see, I think it's interesting. I'm reading now a lot about German. What Lebanese has published a very beautiful text now about Germans and exile, right? But I don't think that it's the same because we live really in a very different world today. And if uh, I saw, uh, uh, Rami I saw, uh, uh, you know, sings a song somewhere, it's, it is traveling. It is traveling. Um, it's a question mark, of course, they're not here. But, but there is a traveling of ideas and a traveling of, of uh, the art now is, is really, you can get it posted on YouTube or Facebook. So even if, you, if the state is trying to control, let's say, uh, the art, it's, we are living in a very different, very different moment. So, and this is where we need to reflect about it. I'm just throwing ideas. There's nothing clear about what, uh, what I'm saying. It's not finished, you know? So having said that, you know, I think in the long, in the short term, of course, you know, I'm, I don't think I'm very optimistic. But in the long term, I think, we have to really take into consideration the fact that the mindset has changed and there is something really there that, 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 uh, that is, uh, that is um, um, being, you, know, you know, interesting. I come back to the article of Asif Dayat about the Spanish Revolution, which I think is a very interesting piece where he says that, you know, he's also not very uh, pessimistic because Asif was here, but he really lived here, was my colleague at the American University, left Cairo, and is, you know, university now, and he has a point, you know, he's, he's worked tremendously on street vendors and, and uh, after the Iranian revolution, and he's worked on here on street vendors, and his point is that actually, there's something interesting about informality, and precisely the absence of the state that gives much more freedoms of maneuvers, and, uh, and gain. And I think that maybe we need to invest on that. Having myself lived in Germany and worked in German universities and know very well, you know, the iron cage of, the sophisticated iron cage of rationality, precisely maybe because we are in Kafkaesque situations, I think that, that this, 
leaves us more, perhaps, I'm not sure, I mean, you see, it's, you know, it's, it's not, I'm not saying that, but it maybe leaves us a certain form of gain and maneuvering that might not be existent today in Germany. I mean, I have a lot of friends, artists, and they have a very tough life in Germany because precisely the gatekeepers, the gatekeepers in the art scene in Europe is really stuck up, you know. Now, coming back, I mean, there is one point when I was reading precisely, you know, you're giving us, this, I'm very thankful that you're giving us all these points about, you know, what is to be done in art. But this one point which, you know, for me, you know, as somebody who's, as a sociologist, who's interested in, in, in once again, distinction and the fine, fine, the fine shades and grades of class in Europe, that is, for me, uh, you know, a, a very problematic and open and, 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 and question. I mean, you haven't mentioned really for me, I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of, I don't know, cultural industry, dialectics of enlightenment, and I still read it and read it and keep on reading it, and I think that this text is for me my Bible, and today, precisely today, with the commodification of, of culture that is taking, will be taking place in Egypt, I think that the cultural industry is, you know, uh, I think uh, a, a point that still is to be raised in Germany, still to be raised in here, and to be thought about it, and in terms of, once again, uh, uh, gatekeepers, and gatekeepers are, I think, a big problem in the arts all over, and the question of Beamtentum in Germany, that is, you see, that is, you see, has a long history. Max Weber is, for me, another very interesting uh, uh, Sociologist, and I think in that revolutionary moment for me, it was really, for me, mind boggling precisely the absence of the state, precisely the, the, the breaking down of that that opened up. <coughs> now, uh, I'm not having, I don't have any solutions about, uh, I don't, uh, because we are in a moment that uh, is difficult. But I was just throwing ideas and that's it. Thank you very much, Professor Mona, for this very uh, interesting sketch of thoughts. Um, I tried to summarize a little bit of the points uh, uh, and to support the discussion to, uh, and to answer the or to answer the, to explore the questions we raised at the very beginning. So I found very interesting uh, three points. Uh, first, the relation of state and society. So Professor Schneider stressed that the state should be in conversation with the civil society, that we need a bottom-up approach as well. Um, and Professor Mona, um, um, on the state of the art, said that the state plays quite often a public uh, morality, um, and then approached arts more as the opponent of the state uh, currently. And another interesting point was art and reproduction of society. Um, Professor Schneider stressed again the importance of art education for everyone. Uh, he brought a very nice uh, quote um, from a famous uh, Turkish writer, right, um, who said that uh, art helps him to change his social status and become self-aware of himself. Uh, while Professor Muller stressed the idea of that arts can also be a, a um, phenomenon of uh, gentrification. Uh, on the other hand, she also stressed that uh, informality might be a creative space um, to have a specific room of freedom within the framework of oppression, maybe as well. Yeah, so, yeah, which, yeah. Not, so not, uh, yeah, yeah. It's like a celebrating informality. No, 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 no. no. This, uh, it's no, but I think it's a space of uh, the great uh, the opportunity to oppress, but also the opportunity of freedom. So I think. Um, and the uh, third point is uh, the role of arts uh, and politics. Um, Professor Schneider stressed this, uh, how important art is for self-reflection, for individual and social development, um, when it's really in a bottom-up approach. Um, and Professor Mona stressed uh, how arts uh, might be or turn out to be a struggle over collective memory and could also be abused from the state somehow. So I think I would like to open up the discussion now. So I always collect uh, a few, two, let's say three questions, and then both speakers have the chance to answer the question. So. Maybe over to the Good evening. Sorry. Okay. Um, thank you. 
thank you both for your uh, presentations and, and for the good wording. I'm actually in, in concern more about uh, Dr. Mona Vasa because I was left very confused with uh, with what you said. It's um, it's a bit of a mind game for me. You you said that the Morsi's time was a culture moment for Egypt and it was the best. I would like to remind you about what happened uh, to Dr. Ines uh, Abedeim, the chairperson of the Oprah House, and what happened to the Ministry of Culture uh, back then, what happened to the entire culture and art scene, and the state television, but also the pro-Muslim Brotherhood channel saying that art is haram, dancing is not allowed. I'm, I'm aware you may, if you were in Egypt at that time, you could have not uh, missed those moments. Yeah. So it, it, was, it was very, very critical. Now, many of the state events actually happen in the Opera House, and there are more theaters opening. We have witnessed the opening of the Grand Theater in, uh, in downtown, also the other one for the puppets that has been renovated. The Opera in Damanur has been refurbished. So those are all achievements that happen, plus the uh, cathedral in uh, Coptic Cairo, and many others to come. So I'm, I'm not sure what you said is, uh, is really to the point. Then you uh, jumped into the NGO laws, both drafts with you contradicted. I'm aware this is also not part of the discussion, but let me reiterate on what the Venice Commission said uh, in 2013 about the Morsi draft law of NGOs, which came completely unacceptable, and the report is on their website. Um, Ahmed Douma and him being part of the culture scene, he is clearly responsible for burning the oldest science center of Africa. And he said that himself. Uh, um, and this is why he's unfortunately facing a, a trial that I'm not supporting um, now. And uh, then you went to the Helwan uh, workers, and I don't know where to go with, uh, with that. But um, you also mentioned something very interesting about freedom and art, and uh, the absence of state as, a, uh, as probably a key factor. Well, we have Libya and Syria, there is no state. And why is art not flourishing there? And uh, interesting enough, today on the way to here, I was going through uh, a letter written by Oscar Wilde, which he wrote in uh, 1890 to the uh, chief uh, editor of the St. James Gazette, because he was receiving criticism on picture of Dorian Gray. And uh, thereafter, he, he wrote, uh, if you allow me one, two more minutes, in your issue of today, you state that my brief letter published in your columns is the best reply. I can make to your article upon Dorian's Gray. This is not so. I do not propose to fully discuss the matter here, but I feel bound to say that your article contains the most unjustifiable attack that has been made upon any man of letters for many years. The writer of it, who is quite incapable of concealing his personal malice, has is, and so in some measure destroys the effect he wishes to produce, seems not to have the slightest idea of the temper in which work of art should have been approached. Then he continues talking about freedom in the United Kingdom back in that time, and what is art and how it should be uh, uh, um, critiqued. And this is what you have as deliverable now in London or in the UK 2015. There is a history behind it. We also need our time in Egypt to develop in a chronological order where people like Wilde and others will come out and, uh, and talk. And um, unless we don't have them, but I believe we do, we only need to work on motivating them and spreading their thoughts uh, before we start to critique in general. Thank you very much and sorry for the extra time. Can I also? You can. Okay. I, have to, I have started by saying I'm speaking of paradoxes. And when I'm saying paradoxes, it doesn't mean that I'm supporting Morsi. When I'm saying no, no, but I'm not saying... No, 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 just let me, let me finish. Because you see, it's not either or. You see, I'm speaking exactly, precisely the moment of that contradiction, where you have the height of the mess, a height of mess, okay, that you have a very interesting cultural scene happening, okay? So it's not, I mean, it's not, you seem to be saying that, you know, like, like, uh, and then you're mentioning what happened in, in the, the opera and the time of Morsi. Yes, exactly. The time of Morsi was, he tried to forbid the opera and he tried, and people were singing in the streets. That's mm -hmm. exactly, it's supporting my point of view. Mm -hmm. That exactly in the moment when he's saying I'm not, people are doing. Then it was right. not clear to me right. that way, I'm No, no that, that's why I started by speaking about paradoxes. Nothing is white and black mm -hmm. in life, okay? 
second thing about Doma, I have my problems about Doma or, or people in jail. I mean, you either do, no, no, I mean, it's not, you either, you either open up just crimes or you don't. Mm. But you don't acquit others. And it's a very problematic problem. It's a very problematic yeah. issue. So I mean, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not whether, whether uh, you know, whether he burns or not. It is uh, 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 for me that is not the issue. You either have just trials or not, and that is uh, something that, uh, in terms of we wait until uh, we have an Oscar. Well, I don't care whether we have. An, I think we. I think every we have it doesn't concern me. Really. I don't. It, I don't care about Oscar. What I have to say, you know. What I'm concerned here is a moment that produced a very interesting, a very interesting. I mean, now we call it culture, art and culture. At that moment, people were just expressing their feelings and their emotions in the street. Then later, curators came and said, this is art. Okay, but, but it was just that people were just expressing emotions in the street. And that, that, is, that moment is, I'm quite, I'm really proud to have lived that as a moment in my life. That's it. Then what comes later in terms of them curating or defining, I don't know what, or writing about it, it's another issue. But, but uh, once again, you know, I mean, I beg for really the gray shades in this custom. Mm -hmm. Okay? Gray shades. Yeah, I would like to collect two or three questions. Please post them a bit uh, quicker. Okay. But it was, I understand it was important for the clarification. Okay, I'm Sami Amor. Uh, I work for Ismail Sufi, who is on Port of Egypt, and uh, I'm a PhD candidate at Brian University of Egypt. And my PhD is in uh, migration. Uh, it's about sociology and anthropology and politics. So my question is on politics and culture, because in Egypt we don't have a cultural <coughs> policy. We don't have policies in any government body. So uh, sometimes politics is a problem for art. And uh, if we uh, import some kinds of cultures or arts to Egypt, the government say no, this is forbidden because of religion, because of culture, because of society. So what do you do with politics if politics say no to art? Yeah. Here's another question. Uh, I am Ahmad, journalist from Bayan News Bima. I would like to ask uh, Mr. Schindler, we have uh, civilization uh, that is mean grand uh, culture. Uh, how we can use this civilization of Pharaohs uh, into economy as you see the rules of, uh, of culture to change Egypt from uh, 7,000 years intro economy. The second question for Dr. Muna Baza, we have people in Arab region don't accept other idea. How we can change this as Daesh, for example? Okay, thank you. Uh, very briefly, my question is uh, from what I share your ambivalence very much, and I, um, you feel apologetic about not giving answers and only posing questions, and I think this is the moment when we all just pose questions and do not understand what's happening. My question is about what you propose uh, in relation to uh, a change in the mindset and different dynamics of negotiation with the, with the uh, state. But I, I, I'd like you to also contextualize this in the discourse that now um, totally demonizes human rights to begin with. Because now human rights is um, West imported, it's, uh, it is an agenda in itself, and it supports terrorism according to Egyptian media, in, in a lot of respects I'm, I'm sure you, you know that. And of course when you negotiate, also you negotiate with another opponent, and the opponent keeps changing, and now the opponent is, is much harder, harsher to, to confront than, say, a few years ago, than several opponents. How do you contextualize negotiation um, with a different mindset within that kind of discourse? Okay, so then we'd like to give you a chance to answer. 
So and, and a sticky mm. question for Professor Schneider as uh, how, how what you would suggest uh, to, to change uh, the mindset and what arts can do in this process. Oh, yeah. But not to discuss uh, the long way from the pharaoh time to no, I, I, I will do it in the contemporary way. Because that will be ocean. Yeah. Without changing the culture yeah. is not nothing. Okay. This is uh, my idea. Yeah. First of all, I think it's again and again uh, the question who is making politics, who is formulating policy. And uh, uh, for me, uh, if, if you discuss this, we have a, a, a ministry. And uh, when I remember three years ago uh, uh, in this uh, um, conference of uh, the Goethe Institute, uh, Basma El Husseini from the uh, Al Mawad and uh, El Takafi uh, shows us a, a model uh, of a new. Uh, ministry, uh, a new system, and it was not this uh, uh, top-down with with the, the Cairo Opera House, with the National the Egyptian, Egyptian Museum, and all these big institutions. It was uh, uh, um, an idea uh, uh, to save uh, uh, culture in the country. Um, on the basic of five different foundations. And every foundation has a special special focus and every foundation is working together with the people. So there, there was a directly way of influencing uh, politics with formulating a, a policy. This was a theoretical, of course, and it was uh, what uh, Mona, you said, the uh, euphoric situation. This was uh, that time three years uh, ago, how, how we can now new uh, start it. But um, it is, of course, it is uh, not so easy to change structure. But it's the question uh, what the society is interested for. And uh, uh, when, when, when I um, and I have a great respect for this existential situation of artists and journalists and also academic people in the country. Um, at the moment, uh, we are living in a very luxury situation that, of course, we have a lot of problems. And uh, uh, the last statistic says that 15% uh, of the population uh, in Germany are poor. 10% are unalphabetic and so on, but not this in this existential way as, as uh, I know uh, I know it uh, from now and every day. So the question is how the society, and this is not only the government, and this is not only uh, the question of democracy. It's it's the question of uh, a, a system. <laughs> Uh, to organize life uh, in that way that the people, if they are uh, thinking about uh, we are a nation, if the people are, are thinking uh, we, 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 we have this nationalism, uh, this is another question. It's a question of identification of the people, and this is, uh, I think, uh, the most important question uh, for politics. Uh, if, 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 the, if the politicians leave this uh, um, possibility that the people are not willing to identify with, with, with the society, it will be at the end a disaster or a dictatorship or uh, whatever, uh, and, 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 and more and more. Uh, and there is no uh, key uh, uh, idea behind cultural policy that uh, everything will be organized. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, 
uh, uh, this uh, uh, the question of education to people? What what are what is in the curriculum? What uh, what is uh, the artistic uh, uh, part of of uh, of of the of the learning? Uh, and mostly, of course, learning is learning how to use the system, how, how to be uh, a part in the system. But it, it, it could be much more. And if we, uh, if we recognize that it's so important, it could be so important uh, to live with, with the arts and to, to give access uh, to uh, cultural expression. And if you look to all the research after the 15 years of brain researchers, how important it is for the personality of, of people, it, it must be part of uh, the polity to recognize that, uh, because otherwise this society is not interested uh, in individual uh, development, uh, then I think it's, it's the end of the idea of society. And, and so it's uh, uh, the, the, the smaller part of life to, to make it through uh, cultural uh, policy. Is, uh, these are the, the most three important questions, how, how we find the way uh, education for the arts, how, how we um, implement uh, the structures, the infrastructure, and that's what I thought about capacity building. And this is also including NGOs, networks, and all their uh, um, uh, direct influ uh, uh, influence. And, and of course, it, it's not only for now. Uh, it's a question of, of sustainability, as I said. Uh, for, uh, it's, it's a question what how we could use it uh, in the future. And let me say only one word uh, about Adorno. I was... Uh, happy to study uh, uh, in, in Frankfurt uh, in this spirit. I never met uh, these, but I met uh, several times Habermas and, and other colleagues. And there is in my uh, uh, bigger uh, study program, of course, a very critical uh, uh, discussion about uh, that, uh, what cultural industry is, is reproducing uh, in our life, and it's a, a question very much dedicated to uh, such cultural policy which focus especially on creative industries, on uh, the market, because at least it is uh, sometimes a question of legitimation, of supporting the arts, if you can say they are, they are um, employed people, and uh, uh, in Germany, uh, the rate is uh, in between chemical industry and, and uh, car production. So these, this is, uh, these are the million of uh, employed uh, people. And of course, it is uh, um, a factor for the economic uh, growing. Uh, but then, uh, um, every time the question is who is using it, who, who is uh, producing uh, what with uh, through that uh, and uh, uh, is the last consequence to stop cultural policy and uh, uh, let it uh, um, let it made by, by the market so it, it's part but not in this uh, 15 minutes uh, as I not quoted all, all the other uh, backgrounds uh, especially from the field not from the cultural studies from the politics um, on the side. Thank you. Right, so let me answer uh, about uh, there is a cultural policy and there is a long history of a cultural policy, mm -hmm. the state cultural policy. policy. Uh, uh, the ministry, our ministry of culture has been very pervasive and there is a very also uh, interesting and organic relationship of intellectuals and the state in Egypt. And, uh, Precisely that, that it's very difficult to be, you know, to be, uh, uh, to claim, you know, a certain also intellectualism and be divorced from the state, I think. But precisely 
and I think that what we're experiencing today is, I think, a generational uh, 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 fight on that level that what Tahrir produced really a new generation of uh, young people who are not related to the Ministry of, of Culture and, and, uh, and can also have access, can publish and can uh, diffuse their, their, you know, their, their artistic uh, production without actually the good people. Some, you know, I mean, some, some, you know, some end up commodified, but, but basically today, you know, you no longer, you're contesting even for publishing novels today, you don't need to, pa to pass through a publisher. And a few, we have a few actually, the work, Samia Mehra has, uh, has been working on, on that, that we have a few now, uh, younger generation, you know, uh, uh, writers now who didn't pass through, didn't go through the, the, the formal channels. But that is something that needs now to be reflected and thought of, upon. Now, Basma Hussein is herself a very interesting case. She could have been, by the way, she, there was a moment where she could have been uh, promoted as a minister of culture. There were, you know, gossips and, and so on, and it would have been very different, and life would have been then different. Uh, but Basma Hussein is an interesting case herself. That she was working in Ford Foundation and, and created all these endeavors that are outside of this field of the state, precisely. And that would be the question then, uh, then we come back here to the question of, you know, what, it's an open, I mean, it's something we've been reflecting, we're all reflecting about, you know, and I'm using, I'm borrowing the literature of the of social movements and not in the arts. Because this is what I think it's interesting to observe the, the phenomenon of negotiation. And you have two theories, it's either, you know, the, now the power of the street has ended, the power of the street has ended because going, taking to the streets are, is something is a dangerous thing today. So people are, one has to reflect differently. Either things turn into violent, violent the underground, or one has to find ways of negotiation, negotiation. And that is, I don't have an answer to that. I mean, it's something that is, that has to be made now. But it's, like you said, I mean, there is an, also, it's all under the mindset of, uh, of uh, a demonizing of, uh, of uh, human rights and demonizing of NGOs and, and, and foreign funding. Now, the, foreign, the, the whole question of foreign funding, that needs another, that's another very interesting, uh, uh, needs a, an entire, I think, <coughs> lecture. Because it's, a, it's much more complex than we think it is on the level that it's not only that, that it's a clamp down on NGOs. It's also the usage of a nationalist discourse that might be partly true, might not, in the usage, in the way it's applied, very problematic. But it's also that, that it, there is an unequal relationship, a north-south unequal relationship that of course it's been invested uh, 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 propaganda-wise, but there is there a pro there is there a problem. So it's a double side. Yeah. 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 Okay. Just, <laughs> just uh, yeah. Um, another question, uh, responding to that. What you said. Okay. One thing is revolution, and you t when you tell us the the, the, the street. Uh, uh, have the power and uh, uh, and, and they, they will uh, <coughs> follow something, but it's uh, it's um, I think at least a question of understanding what what is the philosophy of a society, and I'm I'm not a philosopher, but I think it's so important in that way uh, to make clear what does it. This is also such a term which we, which we very much agree that we not want to be uh, organized top down and uh, bottom up and so on. But the idea behind is again and again how how people have the identification with with their own individuality as part of the society and. And uh, when 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 you are talking about uh, the bureaucracy of the arts in Germany, you are absolutely right. But there was in the last um, 25 years uh, a new development, models of new cultural management. And the question is how, of course, it's 
not only um, because our uh, history uh, uh, of, of the fascism where, where it was defi uh, the definition was made uh, uh, by the state what art is and who, uh, who could be an artist and so on. There, there is uh, the system of the federal republic and that means that uh, the states and of course uh, especially the communities, the cities have the power uh, to organize their cultural infrastructure. But it was in the 50s, 60s, 70s that these cities organized their own cultural program. And now it's more and more that they organize um, the structure, the network, uh, that they give uh, uh, the support to uh, um, non-governmental organizations, uh, the artists, and um, of course the institutions, because this is the, the biggest, 90% of, of, of the 9 billion euros every year, uh, taxpayers' money, is 90% of these 9 billion are going to these big institutions. But this, this is a really a reform. It's not, um, it's not really, um, we are not finished this, this reform, but this is where bureaucracy is uh, in um, uh, rethinking uh, their role as uh, how we manage our society. And this is a question of how we manage politics. Well, addressing the main problem. I mean, it's too idealistic, of course, yeah. Uh, no, no. I mean, it's, it's not comparable, of course. I'm not, I cannot compare now the Egyptian situation to Germany. It's not comparable. I'm just, you know, uh, because, I mean, this is we under, under military rule, that it's something that we have to be aware of, and that it's not comparable. Yeah. But the point is, uh, it's once again, uh, you know, I'm just trying to find, if you want to, if you, if you, if you wish, analogies, and, and again, reflections about the state, and, 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 but I think also, I think we need to still reflect, now, I'm concerned now about neo, you know, the neoliberalism, the global neoliberal ideology, that is pervasive, that is going to be changing our cities, our universities, everything, everything. I mean, you know, our university is everywhere. And I've been, you know, I was in Germany. Factory for the profession. Exactly, exactly. And this is where I think, and this factory is what we've, had, what we've been having here the past 10 years, and what the Germans are having, and what everybody is having. Of course, our situation is much worse here. But, but it's, you know, there are trends that are, you could say that there are trends happening globally and we're, we're all ending up being victims of that, you know, with shades and gray. <coughs> and I think that this is where we need to reflect, of course, the situation of inequality in terms of North and South and what this means in the in them in terms of, of, of exchange, you know, cultural exchanges and and, and, and the arts, you know. And that is a that is a much more yeah. difficult a much more difficult point to be addressed in that the commodification, how this commodification is taking place now today of certain markets and, and then how whole markets, I mean, it's, it's interesting to see what Dubai now is uh, 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 absorbing in terms of uh, uh, Arab revolutionary artists or the graffiti artists and, uh, and so on. And I'm not, this is, we are not to be condemned actually because, you know, everybody's happy to be famous. But is uh, and and I don't you know like point on one artist and say you know ah it's because this is a very but there is that is that dynamic um, uh, problematic question uh, and and then the whole uh, then um, uh, classification of Arab art Palestinian art Egyptian revolutionary art that then you know you, you tag it so that you create whole markets for them. I'm speaking about, you know, I'm speaking about you now theoretically points, but in an unresolved, we are in an unresolved situation politically, I think. Can I say something on that? Yeah. Well, I, I, so I think you maybe to find around with two or three questions, and then... Okay, I, I talk about Palmer. Okay, I, we have... Thank you very much.
Well, I enjoy very much the, the log and it's very important to know the opinion of Mr. Steiner about what's going on in Egypt. But uh, I think what we need now is to, to just build up a learning society. We don't uh, have a society like in Germany when you, you compare. It is completely very far. They have already, uh, through the last decades, organize the society through a learning policy. And in each year, since we have four years ago, we have chaos. Media, um, internet, people writing everything, doing this, they say everything. There is no any way of to have a good behavior like human. We need to come back and to think about how to organize our culture, work to, to come back we are very rich in culture ourselves. We don't need to learn from anybody. We can do that ourselves. But what I miss in your speech, that you talk a little bit about certain time. And I agree with you that this time is very critical. And we need to understand what is going on in order to go on the future. I mean, we have to go to the future. Transformation for me is future. So I miss in Luca, maybe you can tell us a little bit more. What is your vision on our society? I mean, how to build up what Mr. Shana mentioned also before, on politics of art, to go on to build up peace and to have a peace justice, and not to put people a little bit here and there under stress or suppressions. How to let them be, I mean, to, to, to create freedom, to build up on trust to let us not fear. I mean, fearing is also, fear culture also is very bad. So at universities, maybe, in lectures, or need for, to talk to the young people also. And also through the talk show, we have also difficulties to understand the people go to the TV and just to present it their ideas. What, do you want to, what, what kind of messages do you want to tell us about it? Also, there are some misunderstanding between dialogues and what people need. So I, uh, I think uh, I made this uh, during your discussion. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, uh, as much as I do admire, as much as I do admire Asaf Bayat's approach, um, and his belief in uh, the strength of the ordinary people and what he calls encroachment as a strategy. Um, when we look at the development in the last years and uh, what you've said in the beginning, the absence of the state and the revolutionary moment, and then uh, how, uh, yeah, it's, isn't it a little bit scary how fast and to which extent? Um, the system regained its control on the public space and also on the virtual uh, space. And in, in that light, how do you estimate um, the strengths of an independent cultural sector, of the autonomy of, of uh, the culture, or the ordinary people who are also consumers of, of that cultures? In in facing yeah, the rigidity of the system. Yes, I mean, actually, no, I mean, what has been proven is that the deep state continued. I mean, that, 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 I mean the argument that this is an incomplete revolution. And that is precisely that, that we have a continuity that, and the rebouncing back of the continuity. And that is exactly the point. Uh, and yet, I mean, it's, I don't, as I said, you know, I, I, I don't have any, I don't have real answers because I don't have a vision how one can think. I'm just, you know, I'm summarizing what some intellectuals and activists have been writing about the possible alternatives. Right? But I personally don't have a you know, vision about what could be what could be offered. 
but um, I still think that, that, I mean, yes, there is a rebouncing back and there is a very, very strong, you know, amazingly strong return because, I mean, Egypt is a military society and was never, but, you know, I mean, it's a continuing. Continue. The modernizer of Egypt is Muhammad Ali. So since Muhammad Ali, we have a continuity in the military as, a, you know, as a source of control and modernization modernization and, and, and restoring order and, and controlling the state. Okay? And yet I still think that that I mean I you know I, I still think that in, I still insist to say that something happened in culture that is worthwhile and that fascinates me. That that keeps me saying that, that when I you know when I see the last four years I still my heart says that something really happened and that I've never experienced it before. Uh, uh, in terms of the spontaneity, the how quick things were, were in the making and, and then and then the erasure and uh, uh, so the and, and now now today the fight is going to be the fight over the memory, I think. The political memory as Sharif Gader you know told us, you know, in one of his lectures that the, the rewriting and the, the, the the, the archiving of what has happened about what is read is the truth in all that. And I think that it alone in itself is already a very important endeavor, I think. And there the arts are playing <coughs> something. You know? mm -hmm. And I still insist to say, you know, I mean, still until last year, the arts were doing very well. Very well. So, so but how all this is going to be? I have no no answer to that really. I, I cannot because you know I mean, I'm not. Uh, right, thank you. I, I cannot prophesy, you know. I mean, just, uh, but I, I think I'm in the long run optimistic. In the long run. Hmm? Uh, first of all, I think. Uh, uh, I have to make clear and not to be under uh, misunderstood. Uh, uh, my position is not that the artists are the better politicians. No, uh, of course, because also the politicians are. <laughs> <the better. laughs> but uh, the question is how how they could use their position, and this is second uh, uh, misunderstanding. Uh, when we discuss uh, about uh, the freedom of uh, expression and, and the work of the artist, uh, uh, it's uh, a question if we really think this serious. Because most of the time, uh, artists uh, are used uh, for peace and against this and uh, 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 in uh, uh, a special uh, construction um, and, and, and their representatives of their uh, country, states, and nation, and so on. No! Artists are artists, and the freedom means they could be against something or not, they could be political or not, they could be, in a way, uh, creative, as uh, nobody is uh, really, uh, um, how should I say, in an existential way uh, 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 refreshed, uh, refreshed by that. And, and that means uh, uh, it's a question in the society uh, to make a definition uh, how we use all parts uh, of this society, uh, and especially the individuals uh, who are in this field of uh, of uh, the, this artistic uh, uh, world. And wh when you when you uh, think about what what could be next, not vision, but what could be next, uh, I was reading all these reports from the Arab Cultural Policy Group from the eight countries. And I saw it in Morocco, in Tunisia, in Egypt, Lebanon, Syria, Syria uh, where active artists 
uh, uh, were thinking uh, about a concept. And I think these concepts are really uh, a kind of, of vision if it uh, will be realized. Because there is this idea behind that, that the fundament of the society is uh, arts education in that way. There is the question where they make their own definition, what, what does it mean, laboratory for freedom uh, of expression? And there is very clear not to ask for money and budget and uh, to be supported. Um, it's a question how they have the space, the, uh, um, the way how, how, how to make it, and that means how open is the Opera House, how open are uh, the different institutions uh, to give them uh, this space. And I'm, I'm, I'm very much impressed what these last four years in these Arabic countries, especially uh, uh, in rethinking cultural policy, what, what is now on the table, and this is written. In theory, it is a concept, and it's not reality, and it's not implemented. But why not? Can I, you know, thank you. I mean, it's, I'm opening up not something new now. Thank you for this idea of artists and artists. Because I think that this is a very important point, but I think that, that there is something there with the Arab Spring and with Arab, the Arab Revolution that <coughs> that point of artists are artists. And I'm referring now to the work of Kirsten Scheid. She's written a wonderful article in Jadalina on precisely the, the if, you, if you wish, once again, that these artists wouldn't have made it anyway had not been tagged, had they not been tagged as either Arab or Palestinian or revolutionary art. And this puts us, places us then in a once again very problematic question about the location is once again the location of culture and the location of, of, of artists, Egyptian artists or Arab artists vis-a-vis -vis the world market. And once again, you know, there is a world art and there are then Yemenis and Arabs and, and you see it's there's something there that I think Kirsten Scheid is bright, great in, in explaining that this is once again um, a problematic unequal relationship. Yeah. And 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 uh, we, we sorry. Okay. Final final statement. Final statement. Sorry. The 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 question is uh, indeed uh, not only the 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 self interpretation of of why I'm artist and so on. There are a lot of bad artists and uh, all of this, but this is it's a lot of bad. Uh, um, academics and so on, but um, uh, the question is when Hans Magnus Enzensberger said uh, years ago that uh, the artists are seismograph of the situation in the countries, or now we have this term watchdog or change agent. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm using that, uh, yes, uh, because it's sometimes also a legitimation uh, for uh, supporting them, uh, because this, this could be very, very important, but I think at least <coughs> it will not work. Because what, what, what uh, um, could be uh, done by artists uh, all over the three years in Syria? They, they are artists, they, they are filmmakers, <coughs> they are producing music, uh, the, the opera is going on and so on. There, there, there is a lot of that. But to, to, to give them the position that uh, they will manage it. I think they're, they're, then we are uh, absolutely not right. Uh, it's only um, the question, and uh, this is why I'm very much interested also to, to make observation in, in uh, the Arab countries at the moment, and also in, for example, in South Africa with the transformation process and other countries where I think um, we have to focus on it. And we have to make clear that they have to play a role in the society because they, they can tell us with their eyes and ears and all their talents that they have. But not in that way 
that someone uh, <coughs> should use them uh, to do this or do this. Thank you very much, Hi. Professor Wolfgang Schneider, Professor Muna Vasa. Uh, discussion is not over yet. We just transferred uh, outside. There will be small snacks. Um, I think it was a very dynamic and interesting discussion. So please go ahead and uh, um, ask further questions outside. I just want to say uh, uh, thank you uh, very much to Professor Muna and Professor Schneider for coming the Netherlands Flemish Institute for hosting us and having us here. Uh, I hope we can do that more often. Uh, special thanks to Dr. Florian Kostal, who, uh, who had this idea to make the current health and transformation change. Um, Dr. Roman Luxcheiter from the DED, who is also cooperating uh, with the Art Institute Beirut in the transformation and change talks. Uh, Heba Afifi, who helped us organizing a lot of the DED. Um, the outstanding support of the technical team, Ahmed and Ahmoud. I don't know if they are done already, I think. Um, <laughs> and the persons that cooked for us, and of course you to the audience uh, for listening. So I hope to see you in the next uh, talk, uh, even when we don't know yet how we call it exactly, but uh, I think it will be a very interesting format as well. So thank you very much. Thank you.